everybody. Welcome to the Seahorse Whisperer channel. We're going to take a little change of pace today. We always focus on sustainable options, captive breeding, and how aquaculture and the hobby can proceed and succeed while also conserving the ocean and its inhabitants. But we typically focus on seahorses. Today, I wanted to take a look at coral. At MACNA, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with the Coral Restoration Foundation, who gave me an idea of what they're doing to protect the ocean and restore its coral reefs. By now, most people are aware that we're facing widespread coral bleaching in many parts of the ocean, but a lot of people don't exactly know what that means. The basic idea is that most reef building coral have a partnership with the algae that lives within their tissue. The algae gets protected and the coral gets oxygen, waste removed, and f color, food, and growth through the algae's photosynthesis. Bleaching happens when changes in temperature or o ocean acidification or other stressors hurt the algae and the coral has to get rid of the algae in order to keep itself alive. Past bleaching events have proven that coral can survive for a short time until a new healthier algae can partner up with it. But the coral will be left weak and need time to heal and start growing again. We're currently facing the worst bleaching event in history and many fear that climate change has caused these warming events to happen too frequently to allow time for coral to heal and find new algae partners. It is very important that we find a solution to this problem. However, it's equally important that we remember that hurricanes, disease, pollution, and other threats will wipe out a reef just as quickly. Ken Niedemeyer, a commercial fish collector and live rock farmer in Florida, noticed that after disease and hurricanes would hit the Florida reef tract, only soft coral and gorgonians would grow back. The beautiful staghorn and Elkhart corals that used to cover the area could no longer be found. Until luck would have it, they started growing in his own rock farm. How, how did this start? Okay, so this started about 10 years ago um, by a guy who was, a, who was actually a live, he was a, a, a live rock farmer. And he noticed that some of the corals were settling on his live rock. So he started devising ways of actually propagating them. Gotcha. So over 10 years, these, these technologies developed as a result of, yeah, a lot of R&D. We started watching the hobbyists and realized, hey, these guys are cutting these things up and gluing them and doing all these crazy things on land. I thought, if they can do it on land, I can do it underwater. And, and that's exactly what he did. How cool that it started because he watched what hobbyists were doing. Just another example of how even hobbyists can make a huge difference and impact by sharing information and successes. The Coral Restoration Foundation uses propagation and fragging to literally replace coral that no longer exists in certain places in the Florida Reef. Better corals a day, about this size. Of course, if we planted smaller corals, like little pieces like that, we could plant a thousand a day easily. But I wanted to know how the coral tree worked. So our largest nursery is an acre and a half. Um, so there are around 500 coral trees in the nursery. This is a small scale replica of our coral trees. The real trees are about six feet tall. That's so cool. They're attached into the substrate with a duck bill and they're buoyed with a float, yeah. which means that they can actually move with the water movement. That's really cool. Yeah. And what did you say were the two species that you focus so on? So we focus on the Acropora palmata and the Acropora serpicornis. They were some of the first corals to be listed in the IUCN Register of Endangered Species. Um, and they're now critically endangered, but one step away from extinct in the wild. actually no longer found in the wild. They were, we took fragments from wild colonies way back when, when we first started, 
um, and now we're just working with the corals that we've propagated from those original samples. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. we have the world's largest genetic bank of corals. Their bank includes 303 coral genotypes across 10 species, some of which no longer exist in the wild. Since 2012, they have planted over 74,000 critically endangered staghorn and Elkhorn corals back into the Florida Reef Tract, all propagated from the original species on Ken's rock farm, not taken from the wild. And they are truly restoring the reef's genetic diversity and resilience. For a coral to spawn, yeah. it needs to have energy available to do that. Right. So it means that not all of the energy is being used in order to allow it to just grow and survive. Gotcha. It means that there is extra energy which Nation. allows it to produce the gametes. So we know that, that it's working. We know what we're doing is working. We know that if we just keep putting these corals back out on those reefs, eventually the reef's natural recovery processes will be able to take over and right. do our work for us. <laughs> What can people do? So there's a lot of ways that people can get involved. We've got dive programs. People can actually come out and plant corals with us. They can come and dive in the nursery. Wow. I'm getting this crazy idea, guys. Every donation makes a difference. No donation is too small to support our work. You can buy merchandise from our shop. I know my pendant will be delivered tomorrow. Um, you can get engaged with our education program. So we've got a curriculum to schools that teaches kids about these pr the principles of coral reef ecology. And oh, that's really cool. Ocean stewardship. They even ask for help to get the plastic out of their product design. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can get involved. We have a volunteer program. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, looking at this right now. Yeah, we have an internship program. We have a citizen science program. Um, you can follow us on social media. You can help by spreading the message that corals yeah. are in danger. Right. You can make changes in your daily life. You can reduce your carbon footprint. You can make sustainable food choices. Right. Um, all of that stuff really does help. Yeah. yeah. I am so thankful that. Foundations like the Coral Restoration Foundation are working so hard to try to save our oceans. It's such an important topic and I will be the, it's on my bucket list. I am going to get to dive day. Gotta learn how to scuba dive first, but I'm going to because I want to go and I want to help. These people just bring this out of me and I think it's awesome. I hope that it had the same effect on you and I hope that you find a way to contribute and help. Thank you so much to the Coral Restoration Foundation for the interview and for all the hard work that you're doing. I'll see you guys next video and don't forget to subscribe and come to Wine Wednesday. See ya. Thanks for watching.